Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. From the book, The Husband Rules. Rule number 113. Whenever possible... Please say whatever you have to say during the commercials, dear. And rule number 129 of the husband rules to their wives, Christopher Columbus did not need directions, and neither do we. Uh Uh-huh. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a beautiful Tuesday. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch. And uh, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Without further ado, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jerry, thank you. God bless you. Call back in a little bit. I'm sure I'll raise the ire a little bit. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right now, it's time for our... May the Lord bless. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you so much. Right now, it's time for the weather brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And they're offering up to a $1,700 rebate on qualifying new Lennox home comfort systems. All you have to do is call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Wheels, where's the weather? I apologize about... Oh, well, there you go. looking pretty nice, and Scotty Cameron sitting in for your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast as Gina is out. Yes, yeah, sunshine today. Going to be a little bit breezy. Highs around, or breezy, should say, around 10 miles an hour. Looking for a high near 71. Clear tonight with a low around 45. Then for tomorrow, going to be absolutely beautiful. Looking for sunny skies, a high near 75 Wednesday night. Mostly clear, low around 48. Going to see Haiti on Thursday. Friday, maybe a chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the weekend, and that'll hold out as well. That's your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cameron. Uh, Scotty, good job. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, by the way, don't forget the sale that works for you, and that's the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 678-9411. Merv May, Cade Roggy, Lance Udy, all the folks over there with the sale that works for you on Thursdays, Thursday sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Don't you miss it. Also, quickly, I want to remind you about our friends over to Daryl's Cleaners. You know, Dan, what happened to that little note that you made the other day? If you could give that to me, I'd appreciate it. In regards to dry cleaning and everything, you know, dry cleaning really keeps your clothes for a long period of time. Keeps them looking nice and everything else. You're just going to be so glad that you took them into Daryl's 
Carol's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. And don't forget, they now's the time to clean all the curtains and the bed sheets and the covers and the coats for next winter's cold season. Be ready with clean clothes. Daryl Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see Kevin and Cindy today at Daryl's Cleaners serving you. Um... Got a lot of things cooking today. Boy, we've got some good, good people coming on the air. At 9.06 this morning, we're going to have Chris Cortlander from Montana come on the air and talk about federal land grabs and how Trump administration is trying to reverse a lot of that. And then at 9.30, we're going to talk to Doug Giles. And he's written quite a few books, and he's written one about how the men in this country are really a bunch of wussies today. Yeah, they are. And we're going to talk about that. And then Dr. History on the program, and then at uh, 10.32 this morning, Pacific Legal Foundation and Attorney Oliver Dunford. Don't miss that. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget again our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, and they open the doors at 7.30 in the morning and stay open till 5 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. For all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs, there is the place right there, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Been serving you for over a half a century. Wow! Neat people, great business. All your heating and cooling and electrical needs, Ramsey Heating and Electric. All right, calls are welcome. 436 224 I see that the Twin Falls City Council, they had a great big front page story in the newspaper this morning. And, of course, uh, it was all about Twin Falls Council passes welcoming resolution. Isn't that warm and fuzzy? You know, really, I've talked to a lot of people over the course of the last couple of weeks, many of which are involved in city governments around the area and out of the area. And there's not a city or a city council or a mayor in their right mind that would ever disavow that their city is not a welcoming city or a neighborly community. And it's really verbiage, I think, that is totally unnecessary and a complete waste of time by this, the Twin Falls City Council, or any city council. And I just think that uh, any town, any city is welcoming of people to become residents that are legal and are willing to be a part of the community, contribute to the community, work for what they get, that type of thing. You know, I want to add that verbiage there in that uh, part of the story because I think a lot of times we should just say, according to some of the liberals, oh, come one, come all, we will feed thee, we will clothe thee. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. The taxpayers of America have got many lashes on their back from the whip of government saying, you shall pay, you shall pay. And if you want to move anywhere, or come in from anywhere, if you're legal and you want to become a resident, then be like the rest of us. Hold down a job and be responsible and a good community citizen. Calls welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Boy, I wish right now, as hungry as I am, I was over at Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland in Burley. Oh, America's Diner. Mm -mm. I mean, I drool every time I think about that breakfast menu and the lunch menu, dinner menus, and all those burgers, brand new line of burgers. you got to go in, just take a look and pick this one or that one. You're going to be so happy you did. At Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. <coughs> Pardon the cough. It's going to be here for a while. And also, 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Yep, Denny's Restaurant, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. And it is America's Diner. I'm going to talk about us white folks. We're nasty, dirty old white folks. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 
Uh, yesterday I ran into a gentleman that I have not seen in years, and I know he's probably out in the cab of a tractor this morning, and Kent Woodhouse from Oakley. I haven't seen that man for a long time, and it was uh, nice to visit with him. Ran into him over at Tires West yesterday. So congratulations on your staying young and vibrant, Kent. That a boy. Hey, Barry's Equipment and Rental, don't forget sales, service, and parts. They've got three locations to serve you, South Lincoln and Jerome. Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment, all the equipment to get the job done right. Absolutely. You know, they got great personnel that know all about the equipment, can teach you how to run the equipment, and uh, they've got equipment rentals, they've got retail equipment sales, and for those of us that love to mow lawns and mow like a pro, they got the Walker Lawn Mowers at 0% interest for 48 months. Oh, ho, 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 can you, can you cut the grass with those dudes? Barry Equipment and Rental, Jerome Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Caller, you are on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Quick comment. Yes, sir. Twin Falls can very easily become another sanctuary city, but it will be given a different name. Oh, absolutely. There's collusion between the city council and CSI. You know, there were a couple of people, excuse me, on the uh, board, I'm about choked to death there, that were against having the uh, slogan welcoming or neighborly community one of which i know nikki boyd and uh you know she was against it as were one other person too uh i just think that it was and is a complete waste of time by the city council now you're a resident in twin falls give me your honest appraisal of all the time and the effort etc in just trying to get something so frivolous i think passed well, I think the only thing that's uh, been accomplished is going to give a big boost to the uh, Twin Falls Times as far as the left-wing newspaper goes. You know, Tony... There's going to be more propaganda spread. You know, Tony, do you get the paper? Tony, do what? you do you get the newspaper? I dropped a newspaper a while back, and I will not even ever read one of their papers again. Well, I think this morning when Nathan Brown of the Times News wrote this story, I think he made a very bad mistake. I'm not saying he did, but it sure looks like it. Let me read a quotation uh, about this resolution and see if you agree that they made a mistake. Quote, The city's commitment to build a community where all residents are welcomed, accepted, and given the opportunity to connect with each other with bias in pursuit of common goals. I think he meant to say without bias in pursuit of common goals, but that shows you that most of the writers for the Times News, they don't check their work. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think what's what's going to be happening if the uh, people keep pouring in is the guy living next door to me uh, may be on welfare driving a brand new uh, uh, vehicle and getting all kinds of food stamps and everything. Uh, I'll be driving a 20-year-old car. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> don't, what's happening. don't poke fun of those 20-year-old cars or 20-year-old pickups, man, because then you're, you're scratching my back. I'll tell you what. I've got a 13-year-old pickup. My Ranger is 13. There you go. We're in the same ballpark. Hey, listen, man, God bless you. I appreciate your call. Thanks, Tony. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank you. Nothing wrong with having those older vehicles, I'll tell you. I love my truck. I, You know, I really do. I've got a real passion for my truck. It's 13 years old. It's got 208,000 miles on it. And it gets great fuel mileage. And there's no scratches or dings on it. I love my truck. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody about Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. And they're located at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite. 
two in Burley. The number to call is six seven eight one one nine one. They can and will and have helped you and me and everybody get back to being and feeling like ourselves. Great physical therapists, great exercise programs, great use of that hydrotherapy pool. I love that pool. And these folks really care. So please call for an appointment today at six seven eight one one nine one. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation in Burley. Six seven eight one one nine one. Caller, good morning. Good morning, Deb. Here's um okay, Twin Falls wants to be a very welcoming city. Let's start with the veterans. Those those who have lost limbs and have PSTD and are living on the street. Let's welcome them and put them up first because guess what? They don't have to assimilate. You know, I just think that it's balderdash. Now, being a cowboy, there's another word that comes to mind. But we are on the radio, and it is breakfast time. But I think this is balderdash to waste all this time on a welcoming or a uh, neighborly slogan can you imagine any city that would not advocate for that? I mean, come on, any city or town's going to say, hey, yeah, we're a neighborly city. Kimberly has good neighbor days. There's a lot of different towns that have different functions and everything. They don't have to go out and take the city council for months and months and months to try to pass some silly, frivolous resolution, do they? No, they, they shouldn't. I mean, let's get on to more serious things, but literally, would Twin Falls be more welcoming to our vets who who have served our country and put their lives on the line and now are living in the streets because they have PSTD or they came home to nothing or, you know, their wife and kids left them because, but it, for whatever reason, let's get them first. Let's you, put them you, up in free housing. Let's get them free transportation, whether it's just the bus down to the mall. Absolutely. So start on somebody else absolutely i you know what i'm an advocate of let's take care of our own first and then it will be a much stronger nation to help others that's my advocacy and has been on this program ever since i started it you know you touched a nerve when you said about the vets this morning i heard a story this morning at about 4:30. When I was checking my uh, different stories I was going to talk about on my program, and this report sickens me, and I want to get your response to it. I heard a report that this morning it was verified that over 100 of our veterans died while waiting for care at the Los Angeles VA Administration Hospital. I can't even imagine. That is unthinkable to me and so disrespectful to our vets. It is, and I heard a story, and it was the man telling the story himself. He says, I had an appointment with the VA, and it was in Kansas or someplace like that, and he says it was months out, and then the day came and went and the next morning i woke up and went oh man my appointment was yesterday and he called the vet hospital or wherever he was going to go and say oh i'm sorry i spaced off my appointment yesterday and they says oh no you showed up what he says i did not and he says yeah oh yeah our records say you showed up what excuse me no you know i just uh for the men and women that serve our country and they put on that uniform and they salute our flag and they are sent anywhere to be possibly in harm's way representing our country we are not treating them in the best fashion we are not giving them the respect and the kudos and what they deserve by signing up and fighting for us i just am appalled as to what's going on with the va and other organizations supposedly for our veterans yep, that's why i say Falls, open up your arms to our vets first who have nothing left because their family left them or they're mentally scarred from being you know in in battle or whatever whatever the reason it i don't care why the vet doesn't have a home or needs a home i agree you with know, you with, even with his family or everything open yeah. your arms up to them amen amen and thank you again for calling always appreciate your calls thank you very much 
God bless. All right. Thank you. Same to you. Hey, don't forget our friends at Ag Express. They're looking for drivers. Yes, they are. All you have to do is call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen and Twin Falls, 731-2495. Russ and Burley at 431-7175. They're looking for drivers, full and part-time positions. Retired folks are welcome to apply. And they'll work around your schedule two or three days a week, whatever works best for you. And you're home every night. And they've got great vacation schedules, benefit programs. Holy cow, you better call them today. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Ag Express is looking for you. By the way, too, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. They've teamed up and they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on qualifying new Lennox home comfort systems. Keep your home feeling perfect. No matter what's going on outside, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, 678-0459. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. You're talking about something that's really dear to my heart, my dad, and then I have two brothers that uh, served in the war. And I think maybe my granddaughters might not. But anyway, I think that um, Idaho does not have that bad of a reputation. Do some of the Idaho vets uh, listening to this show have an opinion? Because I know my brother that lives in Boise, he just loves it. No, Chris, you know, I'm... Whenever he needs to go there, he's welcomed and gets taken care of and sent on his way. No, I absolutely agree with you, and I, I want to make it emphatically clear that I've had many veterans call and say that the Boise VA, etc., doing a fine job. But let's let's point out the problems where they are, and hopefully they can get corrected. Because when you hear stories about problems in Florida, you hear problems about VA problems in Arizona, and then you hear this story about they estimated that over 100 veterans... Uh, lost their lives because they were not given service at an L.A. VA administration hospital. You've got to point out the bad with the good. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, that may be kind of a, uh interesting thing. The larger the, the state and the more the population, uh, the more you become a uh, face without a without meaning. I agree. And that's really sad. Hey, I want to ask you a question real quick, and give me a short answer. I've got another call waiting. But have you heard the last couple of weeks the new left Democratic spin is to denigrate white folks? We talked about this a little bit the other day. But now they came out, some of the Democrats came out, and they were really highly critical of the Donald Trump administration when they took the pictures and had the cameras for the news on the White House lawn after the the House of Representatives passed the new health care bill, the Democrats and the left are livid, saying that it was a picture of all whiteies, white power, white privilege. They can't help it that the sent the House of Representatives that were there were all white. Who in the world are they trying to get after here? This is ridiculous. Well, not only that, I heard some guy last night on Fox News, and he's black, which is okay. I think that America is a multicolored nation, and I'm really glad. Listen, you cannot give people employment because of their skin color. That's what they... Go for their ability. But that's what they want. That means something needs to be changed. That's what they want, though. People who are educating or something. Well, Chris, this is the problem. They're demanding, the left is demanding that we increase numbers of minorities, token numbers, to just look good. This is asinine. It is. And wait until that left person insisting on that has something that needs to run right, and no matter what they do, they take it back to the company or whatever, and the person who is fixing it doesn't know what they're doing. Amen. Anything. The person cooking your meal. People have got to be educated and then get employed. Amen. Chris, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. God bless Bye. you. Caller number two, I'm going to ask your patience. Please sit there, twiddle your thumbs. I'll be right with you, I promise. I want to remind everybody about Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup. Call today at 312-0957. I understand that that lunch and learn that they had last month at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce was so successful they're going to do another one on May 18th. Lunch at May 18th at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. You need to RSV P to the office three one two zero nine five seven. Don't forget Mount Harrison Audiology. Having hearing problems, she can help. She will help. And call the number today three one two zero nine five seven. Caller, thank you for your patience. Good morning. You're on the air. You're welcome, sir. And it's good to hear that you're feeling better. <laughs> I'm still having trouble trying to get rid of that doggone cough, but I, I feel really good. I'm so blessed. i got so many things going for me and everything. What can I do for you this morning? Well, you know, on the 1st of April, I applied for my veterans' benefits. They have a field office in Rupert, and this gal, his name is Georgia Greenwell. Oh, yes. And she is very very nice and very very helpful i took all my papers there every she said everything is in order here you'll be hearing from them soon so <coughs> here, just the other day i get a letter from them saying boy we cannot process your papers because we need a form dd214 uh huh. Now, I have no idea what that is, and so they had numbers to call. And I called every one of those numbers, and every one of them said, due to heavy traffic, you know, that oh, yeah. they could not answer your call. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it went on and on and on. And so finally, I got tired of this after a couple of days, and I went back over there to Georgia, and we sat down, and she had filled out everything just perfectly. But this 214 has to be in the file, I guess. Uh huh. And anyway, she did a wonderful job trying to get it back on track. But the fact is, there was nobody there to answer the phone when you called the VA. And the, also, the fact of this DD 214 thing, which was merely the day you went in the service and the day you were discharged. Oh, my. And it was already in my discharge papers. You know, one hand doesn't seem to know what the other hand is doing in this case, and this is not the way to start a relationship. No, and I'll tell you what, though. You mentioned the name Georgia Greenwell, and her and her husband, they are such special people and so helpful and so community-oriented. I would say this, that if the world were comprised of people that would help other people like Georgia Greenwell does, uh, the world would be a much better place. She and her husband are just super nice people. They are, and I, I do know both of them. I know... I knew their, his grandfather way back. Mm -hmm. Very nice people, and uh, in fact, you're very physical therapist. Right. Greenwell. Right. Absolutely. That same family. Absolutely. Yeah, but they're really neat people, but I tell you what, we're not getting off to a good start this VA. Well, I hope things go better for you, and I just don't understand why there isn't a full court press all across our great United States to make sure that our veterans, regardless of whether it's California, Arizona, Florida, Pennsylvania, I don't care where it is, they are treated with respect and they're treated with first-class attitudes in helping them. I don't understand why we have these problems. You know, this letter of uh, her correspondence was not coming from Boise. It was coming from the administration, where I don't know. Okay. But if they're, they send you out these things, and if they're too busy to answer the phone, you haven't got anything. What are you supposed to do, bleed to death? Yeah, I, I don't get me started on... Uh, well, you'll have to hold, because all of our workers and correspondents are busy right now. You'll get the first available person whenever they're free. Yeah. yeah. Got to run, Keith. Well, thank you. 
God bless you, man. Thanks. Uh, caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away, I promise. I want to remind everybody about k and Rental. And they're located at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And they're busy. Springtime is here. Springtime is big time for them. They know everybody's out there cleaning up, building, whatever. And if you need equipment and tools, they've got it all. they got a wide variety of tools and equipment, all the way from forklifts to lawnmowers, everything. And I'll tell you what, they've been in business since 1979 and they've got the experience to help you with the right tools and right equipment. K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. You give them a call, 678-3122. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know what's kind of ironic, and the left, the Democrats really forget this. Back when they, had, uh, when they were slaves, it was the Democrats that had them. It was the Republicans that freed them. And today, the uh, Democrats are suppressing where they can't get to freedom again. You know, George, you, of all people, uh, you know what's going on at the VA here, and I've never heard you say a bad word about anything going on in Boise or et cetera, but, you know, you will admit that when you hear stories in Arizona and California, Florida, et cetera, why? Why are these problems allowed to persist? Why can't somebody take care of them? They should be able to. Zeb, I think when you get, whether it's VA or any business, you get the people taught and forget what they're there for. And it's all about them and how they can pad their own nest. And those are the ones that need to get, beat their ass out and get somebody in. Uh, but. I just don't understand when we hear these stories about, like I mentioned, Arizona with very, very slow help to our veterans, and we've had to have whistleblowers step out from the VA itself and say, hey, this isn't right, they're not being taken care of. Why? I mean, why isn't uh, the congressman and the senators of that respective state and the state senators and congressmen, why aren't they just going there and just bearing the, uh, beating the doors down to find out what the problem is? Because it doesn't affect them personally. That, and a lot of stuff goes on in this world today is that people really don't give much food about it unless it personally affects them. And then they, then they throw up in arms. Unfortunately, you're right. You're right. And it's a sad state of affairs. God bless you for all you do for the vets. I appreciate it. George Mass, dear friend, thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. You know... I know so many vets in this area, and they've been so gracious to me. And uh, I just, I, I can't thank them all by name that have been so nice to me and everything, because I might forget someone, and I'd feel terrible about that. But I just don't understand how any state can have a problem. Uh, I, maybe I'm being naive, but you know, if the senators and the congressmen and the national senators and congressmen know there's a problem, and they're alerted to the problem, get in there and fix the problem. It shouldn't have to be by a whistleblower stepping out the front door saying, hey, this isn't right. They're not treating these men and women right. I just don't understand this. Caller, be with you in just a second. Don't go away. I uh, want to remind everybody that on Thursdays we've got a brand new segment called It's Time to Grow with my buddy Tony McCammon, University of Idaho horticulturalist. And that is a very interesting program. Tony has devoted his life to horticulture, and he knows everything about shrubs, flowers, gardens, trees, you name it. I mean, he's the expert. And that's It's Time to Grow on Thursdays at 9. 915. Tony McCammon, University of Idaho, and I have a good conversation. You tune in. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Wanted to say a couple of things about the VA. First of all, I'm a Korean veteran, and uh, I think the VA out of Twin Falls and Boise are first class. Uh, they, I, I personally know of nobody that has any problem with it at all. Maybe some do. But I found them to be, uh, in fact, I'd say first class. Secondly, as far as the form DE-214 goes, there is such a thing that we all, especially Republicans, believe in, and that's that we're supposed to be doing things for ourselves using our own head. And any veteran knows that the form DD 214 along with their marriage certificate, their birth certificate, their Social Security card, are things that they keep for life and they keep in a file. 
Ohio, and they always know where they're at. And they're personally responsible for doing that. Okay, but I want you also to address, and by the way, I appreciate and respect your remarks about Twin Falls, Boise, etc. But answer my question. How in the world can there be these big holes in the ground, if you will, of service to our veterans in Los Angeles, California, Arizona, Florida, etc.? How come these things are happening, and why aren't people standing up and saying this is an outrage and taking care of the problem? Uh, I, I assume that where there's smoke, there's fire, but I also am uh, suspicious because uh, the press likes to tear everything down and uh, show the worst side of, of everything. And uh, there could be, and there probably is, some problems with the Veterans Administration. I don't know if they're nearly as bad as they say because that's, uh, I see no court cases or rulings or anything. Well, I I don't know if I agree with that statement in its entirety because I've talked to veterans that have not received service. I, I know a lot of these vets and Navy SEALs, et cetera, that have been on my program and complained about this. So I, I'm not going to say that it's the media's fault in all cases. I agree that there may be some hyping in certain areas. But to say that it's all maybe just blown out of proportion, that's not true because I've talked to a lot of these vets. Well, I, I appreciate that, and, and I don't know on the others, so I can't I can't make a decision on that and other facts. I just know what's happened to me and uh, and my friends in Idaho, and and uh, we have a lot of respect for the VA in Idaho. Uh, and, sir, let me say to you how much I appreciate your service for me, and my family, everyone that you put on the uniform for. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Your last caller. I agree with him. We are very, very fortunate in this area to have a VA administration program that works great out of uh, Twin Falls and Boise. However, with that being said, I've also had to go to Portland to get my heart worked on to about three times. And the further you get into areas where there's a bigger concentration of people, it seems like the people that work there really don't care. They're from that mindset of it's a job, here I am here to do it, I'm going to do the least I can until my shift's up. And that's just not from the doctors, but that's from, like, the uh, the staffing. The doctors I dealt with in Portland were very professional and very efficient. However, it was the in-between me and the doctor that caused the problem. So let me sum up. Riley, and just say this, and, and wheels, we're getting a little feedback there. Uh, what you're saying is the doctors and the nurses and the medical professionals treated you with the utmost respect, but it was, for lack of better terminology, the paper shufflers in between that really treated you like you, they didn't even want you there. Yes, it was uh, It was the, uh, the I, I don't know how to put it other than the way to put it, it seemed like it was the people training to become doctors or training to become nurses, like the CNAs, the ones that really, they didn't really care. I mean, you were just another just another number to them. You were just there. When you get into the actual doctors and nurses, especially the ones who, who served our country, who were themselves military personnel, they cared. Yeah. And they took the extra step to make sure that things were taken care of, and, and they even called me back two months, four months, and six months, and a year, and six months after the procedures to make sure I was doing okay. And that's what I appreciated. But yep. It was like you're saying, the, the paper pushers and right up to the actual nurses who didn't actually, actually seem like they cared. Well, Riley, I appreciate your call. You always come in with some good information. Thank you for your input this morning. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Caller, I've got to do a weather forecast, and if you'll just stay on the line, it won't be more than 60 seconds, so stay there. Weather brought to you this hour by the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, 382 North Overland in Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Minor emergency! major care the doctor will see you now not in four or five days and believe me they really care and will serve you at the urgent cares and right now here's scotty today with the weather
Well, going to be looking pretty nice, and Scotty Cameron sitting in for your Zip at the Ranch weather forecast as Gina is out. Yes, yeah, sunshine today. Going to be a little bit breezy. Highs around, breezy, should say, around 10 miles an hour. Looking for a high near 71. Clear tonight with a low around 45. Then for tomorrow, going to be absolutely beautiful. Looking for sunny skies, a high near 75 Wednesday night. Mostly clear, lows around 48. Going to see Haiti on Thursday. Friday, maybe a chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the weekend, and that will hold out as well. That's your Zebra the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cam. And I do appreciate it, Scotty. Brought to everybody by the Urgent Cares. Kyle James and his staff at Riverview Urgent Care in Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care in Twin Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. Don't you forget minor emergencies. Major care. Caller, thank you. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, I go to Pocatello to the VA, and I have just, I've always been treated very well. Everything's efficiently well done and everything. But I don't doubt that there is some things going on around the country. It's just the way it is. People just don't care. Well, when you say people don't care, Bob, let me ask you this. Now, I admit I have heard many, many stories, and I have never denigrated the VA here in Idaho, Boise, Twin Falls, Pocatello, whatever, because I've had a lot of my friends that are vets say they have done a wonderful job. But then, conversely, when I've had people on my program as guests, and they've been from Arizona, we've had some from Florida complaining about the lack of service, and then you hear stories about how veterans' files are shuffled and they never were taken in to see a doctor, and they've, they've died and passed away. My goodness, there's got to be some problems, and there's got to be some answers as to why we have those problems. I agree with you. If those problems persist, there's something, something has got to be done. Well, I agree with that, and I always appreciate your input. And have a wonderful day. Don't get sunburned. Thanks a lot. If I want to get sunburned, I want to get sunburned. All right. Well, go fry. On both ends. All right. Fry to a crisp. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, this next little story kind of dovetails into what we've just been talking about because it just infuriates me. And a lot of people, yeah, I get these kooks and crackpots saying that, oh, I'm a against any kind of immigration and i'm against anybody coming to america there these twits out there in the audience there are some that absolutely hear what they want to hear not really what is said i've been a favor of legal immigration in this country i have no qualms about it i've been in favor of people if they want to pursue the american dream no qualms about it god bless them but listen to this it is estimated now in in Sacramento, California, that 10% of the population of Sacramento, California are illegal aliens. And you know what? Tax dollars are being used to create an illegal alien defense fund. I'm not making this stuff up. I I read about it yesterday, saw the story this morning. Taxpayers are paying for legal fees for illegal aliens that have been arrested, and we, the American public, are paying the bill. Ten percent of the population, illegal aliens in Sacramento, and when they go to uh, commit a crime and they're going to court or whatever, the taxpayers are putting up the money. This is insane. You want another story that's going to drive you nuts about this? Listen to this at Emory University in Georgia. Illegal aliens receive 100% financial aid to attend Emory University. But if you're legal or a citizen, you pay the full thing yourself. You, somebody out there in the audience has got to call and tell me why we have let this world be turned upside down by idiots. 100% of the tuition at Emory University, if you're an illegal alien, is paid for? (laughs) 
Unbelievable. Don't forget Mother's Day is coming up this weekend, and I know three great businesses that are supporting Mother's Day, and they are the Goody Shop at 133 West Main in Burley, number to call and have a special basket or a mug made up for Mom on Mother's Day, 647-0106. That number again, 647-0106. Wow, the Goody Shop. They always have lots of goodies, and Mother's Day coming up this weekend. Along with the Drift Inn at 545 F Street in Rupert, oh, you better call and make your reservations for Sunday's Mother's Day dinner. They've got specials like prime rib and finger steaks and shrimp and chicken cordon bleu. <laughs> a special ad, uh, appetizers and a salad bar. Mom's going to love it. At the Drift Inn in Rupert, you call them at 436-1300. And last but not least, my old buddy Doug at Doug's Alternator and Starter Service, 635 21st Street in Hayburn. Doug says, Happy Mother's Day to all all the great moms out there. He's a nice guy. By the way, Doug's going in for a little surgery, and he's going to have some people helping him at the shop on the 15th and 16th of May, and then again on the 23rd and 24th, and the 31st of May, and the 1st of June. He's going to be out kind of healing up a little bit. We wish him the best. Doug's alternator and starter service in Hayburn, wishing all the moms a happy Mother's Day. All right, calls are welcome, 436-22-441-867-4587. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, Jeff. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I cannot believe what this country is becoming. I mean, what what the heck is going on, like you say? Another incident uh I'm not due to have my CDL updated, or not updated, but uh, renewed. And I'm informed now I have to have a birth certificate, which I have, but my original birth certificate is not good enough. i got to go to Boise and pay extra money to have it updated. Why? I have no idea. That's just what I was informed up there to the DOP office. You know, this is this is almost a joke that you have got all the paperwork, you're a legal citizen, you've been a legal taxpayer supporting our great United States of America, you're out there working hard, earning your own way, paying your own way, and yet you get a converse story about where illegal aliens get a 100% free ride at a university. This absolutely just drives me nuts. Yes, it does. And, you know, I don't know. I, uh, it, it's really disgusting. I uh, I was born here, right here in Bay Idaho, 1943. Uh, the only time I left here was when I'd done my little stint with Uncle Sam. But I, I cannot believe what's going on. When they told me I had to go in and have that, had to bring a birth certificate, I'd never had to run into that problem. And... And then they tell me I gotta go update it. I I don't know. I, I don't know either, but I'll tell you what, little by little, inch by inch, foot by foot, yard by yard, like the old Abbott and Costello comedy routine, the left and the liberalism and the absolute brain-dead attitude is taking over this country. You know, I, I'm offended. I want to ask you about this. I'm really offended because now there's a movement by the Democrats and the left to be very critical of us, Caucasians us white folks, because they're now starting to throw a spin out there that's called white privilege and white superiority. I don't feel like I'm superior to anybody. My my uncle said one time a long time ago, you are no better than anybody else, but nobody is better than you. And you know something? There's a lot of truth to that. I try to treat everybody equally, but I'm darn sure not embarrassed of my skin color. Exactly. Exactly. I, you know, I, I drive school bus over at Rupert, and I have 99% uh, Spanish. And, you know, I treat them no different than what I treat anybody else. And Absolutely. Like I told them, I will earn your respect, but you have also got to earn my respect. Amen. And everything is just smooth as, as butter. Amen. I have no problem. 
okay. my route. Well, I'll tell you what, sir. You're always welcome to call any time. I've got to get a commercial in and then take another call. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. I want to remind everybody about our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Doing the right thing matters. Holy cow, are they busy at this time of the year. Woo! It's a whirlwind of activity. Changing the tires and, oh my goodness, putting on brand new tires, fixing flats. I'm telling you, brake uh, work and front end alignment. Wow! They are really on the go at all seven locations. They've got all your tires for your pickup and SUV, your cars. They've got, like I said, the best in brake service and all the front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. When those guys go to work in the morning, I'm telling you what, they are ready to run. And that's exactly what they do in serving you. At Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. Wow! They're good. You're Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I got exactly a minute. Go ahead, please. Your last caller was a CDL holder. Well, I'm a CDL holder, too. I'm a long-haul trucker. And I bet most people don't realize in the rules and regulations to get a CDL, you have to be able to read and write and understand English. Okay. okay. Which should so be obvious. Out there, because I run into drivers all the time. Yeah can't read or write or understand English. Oh, now that doesn't... How on earth did they get a CDL? I, that's my next question to you, and it's also not a very comforting feeling to think that they have not that ability or education. That's kind of scary. And where's their birth certificate? Because just like the last caller, I had to, I had to go get a Boise um, birth certificate. I well, see. Well, actually, mine came out of Utah, but, you know... Well, you know, I wished I had more time to talk to you and others. I say I wished I had more time to talk to you and others about this subject this morning. So we'll have to plan on having you call in tomorrow if you can, because I'm flat out of time in this first hour. I've got to get to the news from CBS. Thank you. God bless you. Drive careful. And we'll be back in about seven minutes with more Zeb at the Ranch. Ah, welcome back. Hour number two. Yours truly, Zeb Bell, with a very obnoxious cough. And I'll do the best I can to suppress that. I apologize. And uh, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. Thank you, Les Schwab, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. Western Way Services, on time serving you. You know, on Thursday, when we're on the route service to have our garbage picked up. I can almost set my watch by the way these guys get here right on time. Loyal to the community and the people they serve, Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call and give them a call today or uh, find out more about how they can serve you at 734-6969. Western Way Services, you call them today. Really good folks. Uh, <coughs> excuse me for that cough. I apologize. I've been fighting this thing for about three weeks. I don't know if it's allergies or what. But we're trying to get rid of it. Hey, don't forget, every Monday, we've got a program on Mondays at 9.15 during the program called Vicky's Country Garden, and she answers all your gardening questions at 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Number to call, 438-5663. 20 years in business serving you. Vicky's Country Garden. And the lovely Miss Vicky on the program with us on Mondays at 9.15. And uh, for all your dogs and kitty cats, horses and cattle, everything, I'm telling you, Ark Animal Hospital, the place to remember and the place to call. 750 21st Street in Hayburn. 
Number to call, 678-1177. And I want to urge you, if you have a dog or a puppy, be sure and call Ark Animal Hospital about the parvovirus vaccinations, highly contagious viral infection that can kill your dogs and puppies. So please call them at 678-1177. Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. They do have the warm hearts for cold noses. Really good people. I know I'm running a little bit behind here this morning, but I also wanted to say thank you before we get our guest on the phone. He's probably wondering, what in the world's going on over there? Well, Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our friend Joel Heward, manager, his family, and staff, always there to serve you and your family when there's the passing of a loved one. And all you have to do is just call the number 436-5636, and they will always treat you and your family with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. So please remember the number and call 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, serving you and your family. All right, now we're going to get right down to the business at hand and say good morning to a gentleman that's the founding director of the Custer Battlefield Museum in Montana. Hello, Chris Cortlander. How are you? Good morning from the big sky country. It is big sky country. I love Montana. I've uh, been all over Montana, and uh, I've been to the Custer Battlefield. And i got to tell you something, Kurt. We've never met, or pardon me, uh, Chris, but we've never met. But I went to the Custer Battlefield one time late in the afternoon, and the clouds were billowing up, and there was almost the threat of a real bad thunderstorm, and it was the eeriest feeling I've ever had in my life. Do you have other people tell you that about the battlefield up there in Montana? Every week um, we get people here and ask those questions, you know, 140 years ago, there was 266 U.S. Cavalry soldiers who lost their lives here that afternoon, and um, also the Native Americans lost a few of their own. But um, I'm speaking to you now on the battlefield at the Custer Battlefield Museum, just a few yards behind the tomb of a United States unknown soldier. Wow. The history and the location and, of course, uh, uh, knowing everything that took place there, it just provided a very interesting but also eerie approach to me and my entire family while we were there. And uh, you're the founding director of this battlefield. Are there still artifacts that are being found today? Well, um, you know... You bring up a very interesting question. It's a complicated answer um, because there's federal laws that govern the discovery of artifacts on battlefields. Oh. Um, About eight-tenths of this battlefield is owned by um, private property, which would make the discovery of artifacts on the private property illegally to obtain. Um, But as far as the federal government property, it would be a felony to discover any artifacts um, on on their property. But in answer to your question, there is not a lot of that going on today. But 24 years ago when I built this facility here, I read the law and I figured out what the law was and I went around to the ranchers in the area that had battlefield property and was able to acquire um, relics that they basically dug up when they were plowing their fields. So I have the largest collection in private hands of Custer Battlefield-related objects that came from the battlefield that were legally collected. You know, Chris, let me ask you this, and I, I'm a real avid uh, reader of history and the American West. I've been in the rodeo business for 45 years and have traveled all over the United States, but every time I go up to Montana, I'm absolutely uh, interested in everything that took place up there at the uh, battle site for the Custer's Last Stand, etc. How accurate, in your opinion, and I know we're off subject a little bit this morning, but how accurate, in your opinion, are the history books as to what really took place at the battlefield that day? Well, obviously, I wasn't present then. So all we have 
is the eyewitness accounts were all sign language because the only survivors on that end of the battlefield where the Custer Last Stand Hill took place were American Indians. And we only have sign language accounts, and a lot of those accounts conflict each other, meaning um, a, there was a few t uh, tribes here, and all of them have claimed to have the victory and the glory of killing Custer. Um, so we all know how it ended, but we don't know exactly what happened and the exact movements. Um, there are 5,600 books on this subject. We were all, I mean... Everybody that spoke English was present at the end of the Civil War, so we know exactly what happened step by step. But here in this battle, because of the language barrier and the sign language that took place, we don't know exactly what happened, and that's why the Custer battle, the Battle of the Little Bighorn, is still such a myth today. And we see um, there's over 400,000 people that come here from all around the world that come to the battlefield. We see about 50,000 of those come through our museum here at the small town of Gary Owen. Um, so from 22 different countries every year, we get everybody from around the globe come here to get their little piece of what happened here at the battlefield in the final moments. Wow. I mean, the history and the stories, everything, it's amazing. You know, over the years, uh, presidents have tried to lock up more federal land away from any usage or basically anybody putting a boot on the soil. Uh, now things are changing a little bit with the Trump administration. Tell us your thoughts on what's taking place right now. Well, they are. Um, you know, I'm here on your radio show to speak about the Bureau of Land Management and the Department of the Interior Federal Law Enforcement, which Trump just cut um, their budget dramatically in the last three or four weeks. Also, President Trump wants to put more Border Patrol and ICE <coughs> on our borders to keep our enemy away from um, infiltrating inside of our United States of America. Right. I'm here to tell you that in 2005 and in 2008, the Bureau of Land Management raided my museum with automatic weapons over a military button and suspender buckle. That's right. They came here to the museum with guns ablazing, pointing guns at my interns and at my customers and museum patrons and taking them down on the ground, one of my interns had an automatic weapon put in the back of his head for five minutes. Wow. It was all over a military button and suspender buckle. I was never indicted and never charged with the crime. Ended up fighting the government for ten years over that issue. But more importantly, there was the Gibson Guitar Raid where Federal Fish and Wildlife raided the Gibson Guitar Factory with automatic weapons over exotic wood they were using on right. guitars. Right. And then there was the Blanding Raid in Blanding, Utah at the Four Corners area in 2010 where Bureau of Land Management agents raided 24 homes where after their raiding, three people subsequent to those raids committed suicide. Oh my goodness. So. I am backing Congressman Chaffetz's bill, H.R. 622, H.R. 622, to demilitarize the Bureau of Land Management, who gets funded a quarter of a billion with a B dollars every 12 months for their federal law enforcement. Why do we need a Department of the Interior Police Department policing U.S. citizens with no criminal background over nonviolent crimes to put us in prison? when those agents should be on our border protecting us against our enemy. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and now we have a new sheriff in the White House. Chris, all the stars lined up to make this happen with Congressman Chaffetz's congressional bill with seven co-sponsors to demilitarize the Bureau of Land Management and give the power of law enforcement back to the chief law enforcement officer of every county in the United States, which is the county sheriff. Absolutely. So I, I'm going to ask your listeners to go to our website, custommuseum.org. You can go on press releases on the left-hand column, and I have a link there that you can contact your federal delegation by clicking on the link, and also you can read more about these stories that I've just mentioned regarding these suicides. Yeah. The, recent, the most recent suicide was in Cody, Wyoming, December 31st, 2016, 
when an amateur geologist took his own life after being raided and questioned by the Bureau of Land Management, and he committed suicide. So there's four suicides subsequent to the Bureau of Land Management Gestapo tactics that are used against our U.S. citizens. Well, let me ask you this, Chris. Let's kind of break this down a little bit in the time remaining in this segment. What precipitated the raid on you or charges against you? What precipitated it? Give us a little background on the story. Sure, and I didn't know this at the time, and it took years for this to come out. And keep in mind, I'm the only person that was not indicted was not charged, did not pay a fine, and did not commit suicide out of those four raids that I just mentioned. So I feel a duty to be very vocal and outspoken. I'm a former law enforcement officer also, and I own the town of Gary Owen at the battlefield. I feel very um, empowered to be speaking out against the tactics that they're using and to back Congressman Chaffetz's bill. Your question is, why did this happen? Yeah. I didn't know why it happened until somebody leaked me a 52-page document explaining and connecting all three raids. And believe it or not, it has to do with money. Follow the money trail. It has to do with Bureau of Land Management law enforcement justifying their appropriation from Congress of $256 million every 12 months. And if they don't spend that money... They can't get reappropriated. It's a lot longer story than I'm telling you. But when I got this leaked document, in 2014, I was asked by an elected official to testify in Washington, D.C., in front of a congressional hearing, and it was titled, Boiling by Land Management Agencies. When I heard that on the phone, I almost fell off my chair. Yeah. I could not believe there was a congressional hearing titled, Boiling by Land, Land Management Agencies. I have that 56-page document on my website, custermuseum.org, press release on the left-hand column, and you can go to my press release and click on that link and read the 56-page document that was linked to, leaked to me that links all of the raids together, and it all has to do with they were ordered to raid high-profile people to get publicity before the congressional... Um, fiscal year ended in October 31st every year is when the federal fiscal year ends, and they needed to go back to Congress to show them that they were doing their job and spending the money from the previous year, believe it or not. Well, yeah, but wait a minute. What were the charges? What were the trumped-up uh, reasons? I mean, certainly when they opened the door, they must have said, we're here because of this, that, or the other. What were the reasons given to you? The reasons on the application for search warrant was that they came to my town and sold me undercover a military button and suspender buckle, and then they went to a federal judge and lied to the federal judge and said that they were off the battlefield, and that was their application for search warrant. That was the probable cause. Let's talk about the probable cause that happened with Gibson Guitar, if you think that explanation was just outrageous that I just gave you. They got raided over an act called the Lacey Act, right. developed in 1988, passed by Congress. The enforcement authority was given to Federal Fish and Wildlife over exotic wood coming from rainforests. They were raided because the export from the exotic wood that they were getting from Bangladesh was not worked enough. In other words, there wasn't enough labor spent on that wood where the exporting country could benefit financially because they need to work the wood before we can buy it. So the Bangladeshi government had their employees work the wood, in other words, sanded it, right. and they signed all the appropriate papers for that wood to be exported. When it got to the United States, Federal Fish and Wildlife decided that the wood for Gibson guitars were not sanded enough. Oh, my. And it, because it was not sanded enough, that was their probable cause to raid Gibson Guitar with automatic weapons over that exotic wood. 
Oh, my goodness. I, I'm a little bit aware of the Gibson guitar problem. I followed that story with some of the attorneys involved. But uh, let me ask you this, Chris. Uh, what about uh, the charges that were filed against you and the duration of time? You had to get your own lawyer. You had to do your own defense. What happened after that? Did the government just say, oops? Keep, it, keep in mind, I was never charged. I was never indicted with a crime. Oh, my so goodness. I was never charged with a crime, I did not fall under the provision of my constitutional right of a speedy trial, because I was always under the executive branch with the Bureau of Land Management Law Enforcement. Wow. If I was charged, I would have been moved over to the judicial branch of the government, and my right for a speedy trial would have started. So instead of prosecuting me, they persecuted me for five years, threatening me with nine felonies and 89 years in prison, and for me to forfeit the collection and the town that I own here at the battlefield. Oh my. So what they were hoping for, which they do in 97% of federal cases, is a plea bargain that I would plead to a lesser crime and they would get a conviction. Thank God my criminal defense attorney, Penny Strong, in Billings, Montana, would not plead me out to a lesser crime. She said, I'm not going to plead you guilty to a crime that you did not commit. So I played ball with the federal government for five years. Then finally, I got a closure letter from the U.S. Attorney's Office saying that the investigation was closed and no charges would be filed. I turned around and sued 24 federal agents in the Court of Claims in Washington, D.C. to air their dirty laundry knowing I could not sue the sovereign and I would be thrown out of court. But I felt a duty that I need to make it a federal court record, all the improprieties and all the laws that were broken during my raids here at the Custer Battlefield Museum. Wow. But obviously, that didn't work because Robert Weaver in Cody, Wyoming, committed suicide December 31st, an amateur geologist who the feds say picked up a rock off of federal lands they went there, they pointed guns at him, they intimidated him, and that night he took his own life. That's number four. Four suicides. Wow. Went to the Department of the Interior raids on U.S. citizens that have no criminal background over nonviolent investigations. So basically, Chris, what happened to you through uh, your town up in Montana and also your museum, it could happen to almost anyone in the United States and have these federal thugs just come in and destroy your life, right? Absolutely. I was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and if your uh, listeners would like to read that article... They can Google Courtlander, Wall Street Journal, that's Courtlander with a K, Wall Street Journal, and they can read about 10 other people that had over-the-top raids. Let me just give you a quick 60-second, for instance. There was a woman walking on an East Coast beach. She saw a piece of coral on the sand as she was walking on the beach. She picked it up. She brought it home. She had it in her home for two years, and then she decided to sell that coral that she found on the sand on eBay. She was raided by National Oceanographic Division of the federal government. They brought in a SWAT team with automatic weapons and raided her and arrested her for selling the coral on eBay. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, Chris, I've only got a couple of minutes so left. We're, ta we're talking about the deep state. Right. We're, talking, we're being vocal about situations that maybe the public really doesn't know about or not aware about. And that's why Congressman Chaffetz bill H.R. 622 to demilitarize the Bureau of Land Management law enforcement is so important to us. Yeah. So I would ask your listeners to call your federal delegation and tell them to support H.R. 622. Real quick, Chris, and I'm almost out of time. i got a minute left. What is the message you want to uh, let the public linger on and think about after we hang up the phone? Uh, what happened to you, like I said, could happen to anybody, but what about the cost? What about all the money out of your pocket? Were you ever reimbursed for all your court cases? No, I was not, and I spent over $300,000. What I would tell your listeners is never give up your right to search without a warrant because they came to Gary Owen here with an imperfection in the warrant that oh. I pointed out. I, I knew better, but they pressured me, and I signed a general consent without a warrant. Never, ever, ever 
give up your right to have your car searched or your home searched without a warrant because that is your right. Never give up that right. That is so important. If you're ever questioned by law enforcement and you don't think it's going the right way, simply ask for your attorney. All right. Now, Chris, listen, we've got a caller, and I'm going to let the caller in here. Real quick, caller, don't be long. I've got just a minute left. Go ahead. Okay. I I worked for Forest Service many years ago. It was back in the 60s and, and uh, actually 50s, and I worked in the garbage area. I was uh, uh, just one of the employees, but my supervisor was telling me they just built a fence around this area up there, and when they... Uh, the the head honcho, he was getting ready to retire. They found out, make it real short, they found out later he was a silent ar- uh, silent partner in a ranch up there. What he did, he was using the money up so that they could use all the money that they were delegated so that they wouldn't uh, lose on the next budget. And the reason he did that fence, he ended up, fencing his ranch with government money supposedly saying they were fencing the government land all right i'm going to have chris jump in and uh, make a response quickly and then i've got to run uh chris real fast your response to the caller it won't be it won't be the first time that we find out that federal employees um are protected especially when they're caught um when i exposed the bureau of land management federal agents what they did, they didn't fire him. They just moved him to federal, other federal agencies. So once you're in the federal government getting that green paycheck every two weeks and you do something wrong and you break the law, they don't end up firing you. So keep in mind, listeners, H.R. 622, support Congressman Schaefer's bill. If you want to learn more about what these outrageous stories mean and to look at the sources of these stories, please go to custermuseum.org, press release on the left-hand column, Support HR 622. It's so important for the United States. Chris, I really appreciate your being on the program, and please know that I'm going to uh, have you back so I can have another segment with you. I want to talk again about the Custer battlefield, etc. Chris Cortlander, thank you for being on the program this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm running just a little bit late. I have a lot of comments I want to make about that last story, but I just don't have time right now because I've got another guest waiting in just a moment, so stay tuned for that. Uh, But we'll have him back on the program, hopefully in a couple of days, Chris Cortlander. Don't forget Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, number to remember, 436-3200. They make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place for your family member. Beautiful patio, backyard barbecues, a lot of local involvement. I mean, this is a very nice place. Only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 436-3200. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Don't forget, too, our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox Home Comfort Systems. And together they're offering up to a $1,700 rebate on qualifying new Lennox Home Comfort Systems that can keep your home feeling perfect on the inside no matter what's happening outside. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 for more information. Our next guest coming in in just a minute, Doug Giles. I'll be right with him, so stay tuned. Want to also remember our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Highway 24 in Rupert for all your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more. Make sure you're protected for your family, your business, and they will uh, absolutely provide you the best in professional care. They're dedicated and responsive to your needs. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call for an appointment, 436-4424. 
While you're over in that area, don't forget our friends at Let's Ride. Oh, my goodness. Let's Ride where the fun is sold. All the four-wheelers, all the side-by-sides. My goodness. At 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, they're open Mondays through Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturdays, 9 to 4. Don't forget they've got all that showroom just chock full of four-wheelers and side-by-sides, accessory department, great service department, all of this for you to enjoy the great outdoors let's ride where the fun is sold at 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world let's go to the phone line right now i'm sure he's sick of waiting for me and good morning to doug giles sir how are you this morning Seb, doing great, man. How are you, big dog? Uh, we have been uh, running a little bit late this morning. I apologize. Uh, Doug Giles, the founder and editor of Clash D, and you're the author of a couple of books called The Effemination, A Feminization of the American Male and also A College for Crybabies. I think you and I are going to get along pretty good because I've said for a long time in this country, the males are absolutely acting like a bunch of wussies. Take it from there and tell us what you want to talk about this morning yeah no you're right and it's uh it's been a systematic emasculation process of the american male in particular which is really the only one that i care about uh being born and raised here in texas and um i think it's uh obviously problematic that's why i penned the book uh <laughs> which uh which i call um wussification but uh Zeb, i use a p instead the effeminization of the american male cause <laughs> The dudes ain't growing up to be providers, protectors, hunters, and heroes. We see guys walking around with skinny jeans and deep v-neck t-shirts sporting a man bun, which I also call a douche knot. And uh, I'm, I'm concerned about our, our nation's uh, character and testicular fortitude going forward. <clears throat> Hopefully, Zeb... There'll be this thing like uh, trickle-down economics came from Reagan. Hopefully there'll be this trickle-down testicular fortitude that comes from Trump's leadership because uh, OMG, did Obama put that kind of a feminization on steroids? And I'm talking about from his mom genes to his inability to throw out a first pitch to his blame shifting on every time he got busted doing some kind of ham-fisted bogus thing to our nation. Uh, that kind of stuff is not an example for those who have a Y chromosome. Doug, let's break this thing down a little bit. I've noticed it over the last five or six years, very emphatic on television, with the wussification of the male models that are on television in the various roles, etc. But where and how did this uh, downward slide for the male attitude, when did it start? Uh, well, there's, uh, you know, different sectors of society. I'd say the, the feminization of Christendom and uh, Roman Catholicism and Protestantism began way back uh, uh, before Protestant, uh, Protestantism even existed back in the 12th century. But I would say uh, uh, more contemporaneously and uh, for the American uh, uh, gestalt that uh, it hit steroid drive and hyperdrive probably about 60 years ago. The left doesn't, here's the, here's the thing, Zeb, the left and big government goons, they don't like men who would be men because men who are comfortable with their masculinity and have the classic traits of provider, protector, hunter, and hero, they're not easy to control. And the left, oh my gosh, the liberals, they love men who are easy to control. And so through the public school system, like you said, through uh, television, Hollywood, uh, all those cultural influences, they try to dumb dudes down, try to emasculate them. Uh, if they do show signs of, of testosterone, I was watching a Teddy Roosevelt uh, documentary last night. They would have put that kid on drugs, you know, the way that he <laughs> cranked right. back in his childhood. They, the left and, uh, and those who, the control freaks, they don't like guys who are guys, and I think that, again, through culture and through public school system in particular, I think they try to drug it out or shame it out of young men. 
Well, you know, when you think about it, I'm an old man. I'm 69 years old, Doug, and uh, I look back at growing up with John Wayne, Steve McQueen, uh, Clint Eastwood starting in the Rawhide series and going on to all the Western movies where the male was the dominant factor in the movies. Now, all of a sudden, everything has been reversed and the roles are changed and the woman can do everything and the man is a bumbling imbecile. Can we turn this thing around? Uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, my book's doing it. It's been out um, for, gosh, nearly a year, and it's still rattling around in the top 25 over there at Amazon. Uh, your shows, your influence, your voice, mine, others, uh, we can definitely turn it around. But it's going to take parents to do it. Parents have not, parents have, <laughs> they better not take their cue from, again, the public school system, uh, if feminine branches of evangelicalism and uh, and the left, if they do, their kids are going to be uh, this Melba toast, and uh, this, that's not what God and nature hardwired them to be. So it's going to take a lot of parental involvement. Uh, when when I was young, man, and I know if you're 69, I'm sure you experienced similar things uh, as I did, and I'm 54. Our parents uh, didn't slather us down with antibacterial gel. They didn't put knee pads on us for us to go over molehills in the Garden of Eden. Uh, they didn't hover over us night and day to make sure that, you know, we're okay. They expected us to get out of the house when we were 18. They expected us to get jobs. They expected us to kick ass. And uh, nowadays, we've got too many helicopter mommies and dads obsessed with their mistresses on Facebook to make sure Scooter Jr. turns into a dude instead of a male. You know, let's talk a little bit about the college situation. And absolutely, these milk toast crybaby millennials standing on a street corner, and uh, they have to have petting zoos, and they have to have people giving them massages because they can't take the way the world is going, or they can't accept the Trump administration. I never in my life thought I would witness this wussification of America like it is today. How can you change the education system with these millennials it ain't gonna happen brother and i tell uh, i tell people all the time uh if they hate their children then send them to public school and in university because those are the liberal madrasa i mean they're they're not making great human beings they're making little socialist jackbooted robots who throw massive five alarm fire hissy fits when they don't get their squeaky toy this is a generation that got participation trophies for coming in like 13th place. So they 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 expect to get their way. Uh, we can expect them never to grow up. They are the fodder of uh, the Bernie Sanders and the Hillary Clinton. And the only way that uh, parent can, the parents can you know circumvent that type of crap, as far as I'm concerned, is to make certain that they never go to those kind of places. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Can you imagine Deb? You're, you're saving up all this money, money, college funds. You got your hopes and dreams in your kid. Then you start paying, you know, forty to eighty thousand dollars a year, and that beautiful daughter or that handsome son that you've got every that's the apple of your eye that's got all your hopes and dreams in comes out with a six 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 tattooed on its forehead with more earrings than a Maori warrior, and they're cheering on and praising Che Guevara. And that came at my dime, six figures for a four-year uh, miseducation. No way, man. There's no way on my watch. Uh, Doug, uh, hold on just a second. Wheels over at the station. Watch the feedback on this a little bit. Well, yeah, I'm getting some coverage in my headsets. Thank you. Uh, Doug, when you talk about uh, the wussification of America, and then you look at our sports, the rules are being changed, whether it's Major League Baseball, football, basketball. Everything is to dumb it down a little bit or to make it so that, oh, well, we can't do this. Somebody might get hurt. The whole world, our whole society is being... Uh, trying to be placed in a vacuum. Would you agree or disagree? No, I agree. It gets, uh, it's just a little too fastidious and, and over-fussed. And um, I know in the, in, with football and stuff, uh, uh, I didn't watch much after Kaepernick did what he did, and, and uh, he didn't get summarily crapped upon by the powers that be over at the NFL. So I didn't watch much football. But um, uh, this past year, even though I'm a big uh, enthusiast, but I had a buddy of mine say that it took like four plus hours to get through a game just because of all the new added penalties. Yeah. And I remember uh, one one play we reported on over at ClashDaily.com where I think it was a, a Washington Redskins 
uh, uh, guy on the sidelines did a tomahawk type uh, sign, and he was they were penalized uh, like 15 yards for some kind of new penalty of offensive gesticulation or some kind of crap like that. You know what? Liberals make things suck. They have no sense of humor. They're they're overly sensitive. They they don't get you know the rough and tumble world that America is and how uh, we were founded. And they want to make everything sanitized, Lysol disinfected, and squeaky clean. And it absolutely sucks the life and joy and fun out of everything. Well, I tell you what, I can't wait to go to the bookstore and uh, tell us a little bit about these books that you've written. The Effeminization of the American Male and also that color book for college crybabies. Where can they be obtained? Give us some locations. Yeah, uh, Amazon.com uh, is the main stomping grounds, and uh, we have the Kindle up there if they if they like to read e-books. We've got a hard copy if they have to have it in their hand. And, oh, my God, uh, Jeb, we've got an audio book that is the Laugh Out Loud Funny. I know I'm not supposed to say this because uh, I wrote it and stuff, but I listened to the audio book uh, two days ago. I haven't listened to it in a long time. And I laughed so hard, milk came out of my nostrils, and I haven't had milk for like 11 years. Doug, we've got a caller with a question for you. Stand by. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air, please. I want to make a real quick comment. I went into service in 52 and stationed out of San Francisco, Parks Air Force Base. We had some uh, airmen that were, one was killed in San Francisco. And so we were getting ready to go on our, our first uh, journey to San Francisco. We were warned not if we ran into a homosexual that we could not hit them because they were under doctor's care. And if you hit them, then you would be arrested. This is where it all started years ago in 52, okay? All right, let's have uh, Doug respond to that. Respond to the caller, please, Doug. Uh, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't recommend hitting anybody uh, unless, uh, you know, homosexual, heterosexual, Absolutely. Uh, bisexual. Yep whatever sexual uh unless they deserve it so i really don't know what to uh, uh make about that comment no and uh, i understand uh, your uh, phrase on that i i think i'd go along with that too i'm not gonna advocate violence on anyone however we don't know the circumstances and what prevailed itself so that maybe violence yeah, was I necessary to, uh, say it say a gay guy or a non-gay guy zeb uh one of those anti-first amendment trump little prissy protesters in their black little dicky costume and their black face mask if i'm doing if i'm if i'm supporting freedom of speech my candidate and i'm in a uh, gun carry zone and one of those mooks uh whatever their sexual proclivities is gets up in my grill with a baseball bat and threatens to harm my family i not only will punch them i'll shoot them twice in the chest and then once in the forehead this, this, these kind of rioters are, it's out of control, man. I don't know if you've been watching these videos, but. I think they're. I think somebody's going to get killed. Well, Doug, and, uh, my you know, right to keep and bear arms and the protection of this thing uh, that is afforded to me by God in our Constitution, the right to life, uh, is more precious than this guy wielding a baseball bat up in my face and threatening to hit my children. I'll well, shoot them. You know, and let's talk about that just for a quick that second. That is why I don't go to those events. Well, let's talk about this just for a quick minute. I've got about two minutes left. We've seen the left use that as a ploy to stifle free speech. We've seen that at Berkeley. We've seen it at other places. And then the colleges, being all milk toast leadership, they said, well, we have to think of the safety of the students, so that's why we'll cancel conservative thought. Uh, give me your response to that, and then we'll take one more quick call. Yeah, bro. Again, wussification on steroids. <laughs> It's so funny with that, because Berkeley, uh, uh, in the, the formation of the university, I believe that their seal for that college was was the Holy Bible and the appeal to eternal truth. Uh, nowadays, if you don't, uh, you know, again, you know, lockstep to liberals' uh, mantra at that and other uh, universities that are, as far as I'm concerned, the liberal madrasa, then you don't get to think and you don't get to speak. And uh, I think it's pathetic because I'm, I'm, we call our website ClashDaily.com because I like the clash of world views. I like talking. I like debating. I like discussion. But the snowflakes, the little wussies that I write about in my book, The Effeminization of the American Male, 
they don't like it. It's their way or the highway. Yeah. And uh, I think that's really sad. And if I was a liberal, I would also think that that is really sad, that our young people can't even have a uh, flow of ideas and exchange without being offended and running you know, to aromatherapy. It's pathetic. I agree. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a bastardization of what especially a young man should be. All right, we're going to take one more quick call, and then I've got to wrap it up. Call her quickly. You're on the air. Well, the insecurity of this bunch is so viral that it, it's amazing. And they're desperate attempts for attention. And, and, and nothing, and no attention, no amount of attention will ever cure anything. And see, when they're not sure exactly what is what and who they are, because they're going against the way they were designed, uh, there'll never be happiness, and, uh, but they're too distracted and lost to ever know it. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, Doug, and then I've got to go. Yeah, today uh, in this selfie generation, everybody's a star, and our, and our young men uh, especially aren't raised, again, to be selfless people who are providers, protectors, and hunters and heroes. And Zeb, that's what I cheerlead in my book, and if uh, your listeners want their uh, young son in particular to steer away from being cultural carnage, then uh, go over to Amazon, click your mouse, melt your plastic. If you hate the book and if it doesn't give you solid principles, I'll buy it back from you. All right. The effeminization of the American male and Doug Giles, thank you, sir, for being on the program. God bless, and I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. Stay rowdy, Zeb. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Doug Giles on the program this morning, and uh, the book really holds a lot of truth. The effeminization of the american male how true uh we got to get a weather forecast on here right now and it's sponsored by phillips oaks goodwin crane and company i know these people and i'm telling you what they are first class in serving you they've been providing accounting services to the minicash area for well over 50 years with the best of tax return preparation tax planning business consulting bookkeeping services payroll services retirement planning the list goes on and on and they've got two locations to serve you in Burley and Rupert. Please remember to give them a call and visit with them. They can help and they will help you, your family, and your business. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Scotty with the weather. Well, going to be looking pretty nice and Scotty Cameron sitting in for your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast as Gina is out. Yes, sunshine today. Going to be a little bit breezy. Highs around, breezy, should say, around 10 miles an hour. Looking for a high near 71. Clear tonight with a low around 45. Then for tomorrow, going to be absolutely beautiful. Looking for sunny skies, a high near 75 Wednesday night. Mostly clear, lows around 48. Going to see Haiti on Thursday. Friday, maybe a chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the weekend as that will hold out as well. That's your Zebra the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Camp. Uh, thank you, Scotty. And the weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company CPAs, providing accounting services to the entirety of Minicash area for over 50 years with locations at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. You know, what Doug Giles was talking about is really, really the truth. You know, us guys need to act like guys. I have never... Last night there was a TV commercial on. Deanna and I are sitting there watching the baseball game. And I, I, it just caught my attention because the teenage boy was so effeminate. He was no more a male other than just wearing trousers and slacks. It was pathetic. And the attitude with his parents, he had an accident with the car, and he went in to tell his parents and everything. It was just really sickening. And, you know, attitude, the way we do things, the way we're perceived, and uh, the changes in society have been not for the better. You know... 
I keep referring to the John Wayne attitude on this program, but really that's the truth. You know, when you stop and look back 40, 50 years, men were men, women were women, men treated women with respect, opened doors for them, etc. It was a much better society than what it is today, and I'll stand up and go toe-to-toe with anybody on that subject. And you're next, so call her. Good morning. Well, Deb, I just over the weekend, I was at a restaurant in Twin, my wife, and uh, there was a boss person, and I, I thought I wasn't sure what I was seeing, and uh, I was trying to look for some sort of uh, way to figure it out, and I thought. You know, it's a terrible thing to be so, you know, distracted and unhappy with the way you were made because, you know, of the way you were raised or what you believe. Uh, Your parents weren't able to get the job done because they were too distracted and, and, and whatever it is. You know, being a mom and dad, it isn't easy, and it takes a lot of work, and it never ends. And uh, I just feel sorry for them because, like I said, it didn't matter how much attention they get from the public. They still go home, and they're sitting in confusion with the rest of their confused friends. And you say, where does this end? How, is it, how do you survive this? And uh, will you ever know better? Yeah. I think you summed it up uh, very well. I I just think that our society, and, and not just here in the United States, but all over the world, we forgot the difference in genders. There are men... There are women, and I am not. I don't care who makes a tape of this program, who wants to uh, come after me from different organizations, whatever. I don't care. I, I, God made two genders, a male and female, and be respectful of who you are and what you represent. And this absolute idiocy of, well, there's like, what, a hundred and some different genders that people can uh, try to adhere to nowadays. Randy, it's just sick. It's mentally off balance and quite frankly in simple terminology they're nuts well when they at the Clint Falls High School Clint Falls High School they, there was a gender signs male female and it said you know tradition is what's right or whatever yeah. and uh, it, it, it went viral on the you know on, on the social media and my daughter who grew up in Burley graduated from Burley High School works in Twin and she said yes I agree with that and people that she thought she knew had turned on her because they said, you're, they called her a, a name. Yeah, and well. Says, well, I'm not going to change my mind because I know better. Absolutely. And you see, but in so many cases, people buckle and they, they, they fall to the pressure and they go along with the group and the group is lo- being led. They're all lost. And at this point, they'll never find themselves. I agree with that. I got another call waiting, but Randy, thanks for your call. I appreciate it. Caller, quickly, I got 45 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. On that segment about Custer's last stand, it reminded me of a situation down there in the Hollister area where they confiscated that guy's arrowheads and stuff like that. Yeah. Wasn't that a little bit overreach? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I was going to get into that a little bit, and I thought better of the issue this morning. I wanted to spend it on a personal note with uh, what Chris Cortlander had to say, and I will uh, kind of go back to that subject in the future. But right now, Keith, I'm out of time. I'd love to visit with you more on it, but I can't. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a little break right now and send it back over to our main studios as we prepare for the next hour. And it's going to be Dr. History coming up on the program at 10.06. And uh, then I want to remind you, too, we're going to have Oliver Dunford on at 10.30 with the Pacific Legal Foundation. I think you're going to find the topic for this morning very, very interesting. So don't miss that. Uh, quick note, i got to get this in here. 
The uh, Put up your kickstands and get ready to ride on May 27th for the third annual Idaho Roll Call Memorial Ride sponsored by the Rupert Veterans Memorial and the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association and the City of Rupert. And the bikers will meet at Let's Ride in Rupert at 930, and then they'll ride for support of our fallen soldiers, and then everybody's going to meet at the Idaho Roll Call Monument at 7th and Scott in Rupert for a memorial program at 1 p.m. For more information, Contact my buddy George Mass at six five zero zero one zero four. Got to run to the news. I'll be back in seven minutes. Wow, the old cough has got me a little bit this morning. <coughs> So so does Dr. History. My goodness sakes, we got the same problem, old buddy. How are you? I'm good. Oh. We we were comparing notes, and Dr. History's had this cough for about, uh, my goodness, how long? Oh, about six months is all. Six months. Yeah. I've just had it for about three weeks, and I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is, but uh, please, let's get rid of it for heaven's sake. Yeah, not dead yet. No, neither one of us are dead yet. Hey, by the way, uh, i got to tell everybody, this is Zeb at the Ranch, even though it sounds like uh, a coughing fit ward at the hospital. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Now, I got my air back. Here we go. I want to remind everybody, too, about Kelly's Bearing Supply, 1407 East Main Street in Burley. Don't you worry. They've got all your bearings, chains, brackets, everything. Zach, Brett, and Alex, the whole crew. They are the bearing specialists, and uh, they always say that you'll know where you're at when you get your bearings at Kelly's. Kelly's Bearing Supply, 1407 East Main Street in Burley, 678-9398. And now, without further ado, here is... My coughing partner, Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. Hi, buddy. What a nice day out there. Sun oh, shining. Yeah. Farms are looking good. I love to see the farm ground. I love this time of the year. Yeah. I really do. And uh, now, we've covered the last couple of weeks a lot about cattle drives and stampedes and uh, don't. Uh, stick your finger into the bowl that Cookie's cooking for supper that night, and uh, what are we going to talk about this morning? We're going to pretend like you and I are just stepped off the boat from Europe, and we're going to head west, Uh and what we need is a wagon. Uh Uh-oh. So, Conestoga wagon? Or well, what? we're going to talk about that. Oh. So you got to decide which one you want when we get done here. Well, how much money have I got? Well... That's that's a factor. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is. Right. You might be walking. All right. <laughs> but before we get going, i got to mention uh, one of our listeners, guy in Burley named Ken Craig, is one that uh, you mentioned a while back that you were collecting old toy guns. I am, and I really thank you for that. Yeah, that is a unique little gun, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know what? And, and I've had some people send me, and here's the deal so everybody knows. I, I'm making something very special for for my office, and I'd like to find some of the old, old cap guns or guns like the Hopalong Cassidy or the Gene yeah. Autry or the Roy Rogers and that type of thing. And if they have them, I don't care if they're they're broken up or anything, I'll take them. Uh, the old 50, 60 year old cap guns, I'd sure like to have yeah. some. Well, thank Ken Craig because he just found this one in the dirt and gave it to me and said, Give that to Zeb. He found that in yeah. the dirt. Oh, yeah. My. So, anyway. All right, so here we go. We're going to head west. But uh, we kind of need horses and wagons or oxen or whatever we need. So, actually, there were guidebooks written expressly for Western pioneer immigrants, which described the useful wagon features. But, you know, the test of a wagon and team was really the trip itself. And sad to say, a lot of them did not make it. I mean, we don't see that part of it. But the rate of failure for wagons made of sometimes unseasoned wood ran as high as 22 out of 26 wagons. So you might be in a wagon train, and 22 out of the 26 don't even hardly get 
halfway here. So in other words, they were made of faulty material? Right, yeah. Really? So they just kind of fell apart. How would a person fresh off the boat in this country, how would they know if they're getting took or not? That is the question. So if you go walking down the street and you see... Uh, Big Al's used wagons, you might want to say, uh, okay, give me the car facts on that one. Well, now, really, yeah. though, when you think about it, uh, when they went to, like, St. Louis, right? okay, and they were going to buy a wagon to go west, young man, Yes. how would they know? Well, and that they did have these guidebooks that kind of told them. Really? So, uh, so uh, let's take a look at this, okay? There was a number of different styles and makes of wagons uh, available to the family moving west. Now, contrary to popular belief, not all covered wagons were Conestogas. Conestogas. In fact, not many true Conestogas are used out west. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't know that. So, okay, so Studebaker. I've okay, heard of that. Espenscheid. Okay. I and think I was talking to Ray Bagby one time and he told me that name. Yeah, Espenscheid yeah. and Murphy. I haven't heard that one. Murphy wagons. So, uh, the immigrant or the western wagon, a lot of times actually were just converted farm wagons. Really? Yeah. And uh, there was another wagon, they called it the Schlutter or Shuttler wagon, but nobody wanted to risk riding in something that was built by convicts being paid 25 cents a day. Yeah, might be a little risky. <laughs> yeah. So what makes a covered wagon a covered wagon? You just put some well, bows on it and put a tarp yeah, over it. Yeah, the cover. Yeah. You know? So let's like, so, okay, we're shopping here, Zeb. Okay. okay. So we're immigrants, We're right? immigrants, We're yes. immigrants. Okay. Right. So we're going to look. Here's some. It can be made out of homespun cloth, canvas, cloth treated with linseed oil, uh, none of the half a dozen so materials really shed water or rain that good. Oh, oh. So none of so them, whatever's inside is going to get wet. It's going to get wet. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, recommended Zeb by our our local used wagon salesman is a double cover. Okay? okay, a double because they get they get torn. Yeah, I mean they're going through yeah, trees and burning brush. the wagon maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's flaps. But, uh, you know, a clever seamstress can sew pouches to the inside of the cover for extra storage. So on the inside, you know, um, uh, you, uh, our wives could of make the... Of the tarp. Yeah, on the oh, tarp, okay. sure. Now, something has to hold the cover in place, and that something is a series of flexible hickory bows or hoops. Now, other wagon parts include the wooden bed or the box. Now, the running gear beneath the box... The running gear includes the wheels, the axles, and something called the hounds. I don't know that. Okay. And a bunch of other stuff that's underneath there holding everything together. Okay. Okay, so let me just describe a hound to those in the know are actually a wooden, often iron-clad brace that helps connect the axle assembly to the wagon tongue. Uh-huh. And I'm still not sure what it is. I'm not either. <laughs> so, and you're supposed to be the expert. I'm the expert. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now, no one of sound mind and body wanted to ride in the cramped wagon. And so our friendly salesman says the Studebaker wagons uh, to be kind of the best running of the lot. How, how big were they? Well, and we're going to get to that because there's oh, okay. different sizes. Yeah. So the Studebaker boys from South Bend, Indiana, they have introduced steel skeins for easier running. Now, I'm assuming that means the undercarriage. I think so, yeah. This, and, and here's what they say. The skein is a sort of a thimble that fits over the end of the axle. Oh, uh, Okay. Over okay. The end of the I got you. Okay. Yeah. So the reliability of this wagon made it much better than average. So the Studebaker brothers perfected a process whereby the running gear was soaked and boiled in oil to drive out moisture. Now this reduces the danger of shrinkage and loose wheels. Uh -huh. uh, the axles are made of durable Indiana black hickory and other hardwoods. Did you ever stop to think that, uh, okay, fine, they were made back in, let's say, Missouri, Indiana, back in that area. They didn't have the trails with the rocks and everything. How did they know they were going to work? You know, I, I, all I can say is they had to, you know, your name was only as good as your product. Yeah. So, But, you know, I know I've heard stories of where uh, coming across, sometimes as they crossed a, a river or a stream, they would stop in the river and let the, the woods soak up the moisture. So it would swell up a yeah, little Yeah, so it would swell up, yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway... 
these Studebaker guys seem to have a, a pretty good. Uh, I you know. stopped in the middle of a stream on my four wheeler, not by <laughs> wanting to, but I was there for quite some time. Well, you didn't want a, a loose wheel, and yeah. and you know, you've heard that uh, country western song. You picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. Good. okay. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Anyway, okay, so an aggressive newspaper ad campaign helped spur wagon sales for the Studebaker brothers. Uh, they've met the demand by inventing a drying kiln that dries wood quickly. Now, unlike most wagon ma- ma- makers, they they developed a national sales outlet. They had a brother in St. Joseph, Missouri, that was selling their wagons for what, what year was this? You know, was I'm that not back in the sure. 40s, 1840s? Somewhere in there, yeah. I, I yeah. don't have an actual date right here. But anyway, now in appearance, the Studebaker retains the beauty of the Conestoga with the upswept ends in the wagon box. However, it is much lighter than the Conestoga. And for those who uh, kind of like to drive the Cadillac of the uh, uh, of the wagons, the name Studebaker is written in yellow on the wagon. Really? You know, so if you're driving through town and they say, hey, there goes a Studebaker. Yeah. Right? And okay. they did that with their cars, too. Yes. <laughs> if they didn't run through town a lot of times. No, they didn't. <laughs> anyway, you know, Studebakers came uh, as freighters and in many other their sizes actually so depending on size they can carry loads up to two tons now for immigrants a ton and a quarter pretty much maximum uh, unless you're carrying some feed but the smaller vehicles are available for about 160 to 200 dollars plus the cover okay so they were 200 bucks yeah. Okay. But we're going to get to how much the whole thing costs okay. to set up. Do we need right. a break right here? Sir? No, no. Okay. You're, you're you're really good, but I'm uh, curious about buying the horses, the harness, all right, the all wagon. Right. Okay. So now we're going to. Okay. We talked about the 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 Studebaker. Let's talk about the Murphy. Okay. J. Murphy or the Murphy wagon is the product of a guy named Joseph Murphy of St. Louis, Missouri. Now this guy was an Irish immigrant. He started his own firm in 1826. And he produced one of the largest and most dependable freight wagons available. Mm. Now, despite their reputation as freighters, some 20,000 20, Murphys uh, have also been used by immigrants on the Oregon How Trail. many? 20,000. They made 20,000 wagons? wagons? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, one trader, William Sublet, uh, purchased a Murphy wagon for $200 in 1830, and Actually, his was the first wheeled wagon to arrive in the Rockies. Okay? So. I'm still stuck on 20,000 wagons. Yeah. Well, and I'm thinking, you know, those maybe didn't all, all necessarily go west. Yeah, but I mean, really, uh, mass production, 20,000 yeah, back in those days, that's yeah. a lot of wagons. Yeah. So, in style, the Murphy wagon is kind of a, a cousin of the Conestoga, and but unlike the Conestoga, Mur- Muff- Murphy wagons are custom made. They have no standard design. Wow. So every wagon is different. Is different. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now on the road, the Murphy wagons 8 inch wide wheels, 8 inch wide. Yeah. Wow. Allow it to roll smoothly over the prairie sod. That had to be heavy. Yeah. And because of its size, the freight model required 8 oxen to haul it. Now the wagon box is 6 feet deep. Now, that's just a little over... Uh, we wouldn't be able to look out the side, right, Zeb? No, I mean, I, I'm right at six foot. My goodness, it was that deep inside? Yeah, yeah. And 16 feet in length. Okay, 16 by 6. High. High. Yeah. yeah. Now, and the rear wheels are 7 feet in diameter, made out of white oak or hickory. So you got a, a huge rear tire. Now, did they use a smaller wheel in front? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the tongue measured 50 feet. 50, 50 feet. feet? That was one heavy dude. <laughs> yes. So the question. You didn't outrun the Indians. No, probably not. Okay, so the question, why was the Murphy wagon uh, reached uh, uh, gigantic proportions? Yeah. Why was it so big? Okay, the, que- the answer is it was a tax dodge. Really? In 1839, the Spanish governor of New Mexico slapped a $500 fee onto each wagon load of American goods brought into his province. 
Murphy responded by creating jumbo wagons that could haul up to two and a half tons worth of goods, and he made his fortune. Okay, but wait a minute, though. We're talking, how much did that thing weigh? It, it had to be huge. If it's going to haul that many tons of It was six goods. feet deep. Yeah. 16 feet long. Yeah. And had a tongue that was 50 feet long. Yeah. And then it had the eight-inch wide wheels. Yeah. I'm talking, uh, am I crazy by thinking that had to be well over 3,000 pounds? No, I, I'm sure. It had to be, you know. But the Murphy wagon actually uh, had the fewest defects of any wagon. And this is attributed to the fact that they were all custom-made, careful workmanship. Now, Murphy actually used a hot iron to drill bolt holes, and he drills them one size smaller than the bolts. Okay, now this keeps the wooden wood from cracking and rotting around the bolt holes. Okay, now Murphy also produced a smaller family type wagon with uh, optional improved beds or shelves. Oh, and that's the ones that. So you could go for a Sunday drive. Yeah, those were the ones that came west. I see. The others were freight. How big were they? Uh, it doesn't. I think we may get to it. We'll see here. Okay. But they were obviously smaller. Now, the Espenscheid wagon yeah. was made by a guy named Louis Espenscheid of St. Louis and was popular with the Army during the war between the states. And they are also known as U.S. wagons because of the markings on the side. So the U.S. wagons, they were high boxed. Uh, they looked much bigger than they actually were. And if you just can't bear to leave everything behind, the Espen Scheid might be the wagon of choice if you've got a whole bunch of stuff you want to take. Really? Now, that's interesting because what could they take? Well, you know what? I've got a list of I'll stuff. I'll bet you do. <laughs> do. You know? Now, and actually, the Espen Scheid, a freight model, will hold up to three and a half tons worth of goods. And, Three and a half how tons. many oxen did it take to pull that dude? A bunch. A, a bunch. Bet. Yeah. A rawhide. Yes. <laughs> so the Conestoga wagon is in a kind of a class by itself. Uh, its origins are unclear, but it appears to be a cross between a two-wheeled German cart yeah. and the English road wagon of the 1700s. Wow. And it derives its name from Conestoga Creek in southeastern Pennsylvania. And that, in turn, got its name from the Conestoga Indians who used to be in that area. Why do you think that the term Conestoga wagon was widely accepted as the term for all wagons? I think it just sounds better than Murphy or Espenscheid. Yeah, you're right. Or <laughs> I mean, Studebaker. Or Studebaker, yeah. Come on. You don't want a Studebaker wagon. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, you know, the first known reference to a wagon of this type was in 1717. So a long time ago. Really? And in 1750 through 1850, this was kind of the Conestoga's heyday. Uh, not many Conestogas have made have been used out west since it was designed primarily as a freighter. Uh huh. So, but these wagons were used mostly in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Maryland, Virginia, and before the coming of the railroad, the Conestogas achieved unheard of speeds of. 12 to 15 miles a day. No kidding. Yeah, well, they were moving. You could stand in the main street of St. Louis and wave goodbye till your arm fell off. They're for, still there. Yeah, for two, three days, you know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> now, Conestogas are driven from the left-hand side, and that's where the American practice of the driver being on the left. Yeah. Now, the Conestoga is not well... And naturally, they came with a woman sitting on the right on the telling right, you where yes. to go. <laughs> that's right, giving you directions. <laughs> So, but the Conestogas were not well suited for prairie travel. It was so huge. You know, it I mean, where if you hit a bump with one of those big yeah. dudes or a gully, wow. Now, here's another kind of not very pleasant part of it. Uh, because the ends of the wagon were angled and way out there, there was no seat for the driver. Whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. There was no, no seat, seat for, for the, the driver. driver. So he had to employ, quote, the ankle press. Do you know what that is? I haven't got a clue. He would ride the left wheel animal. He, he would, would ride what? the he would ride the animal on the left side oh. and drive the team. Okay. 
So no, they don't show that in the movies. No, you don't see a guy sitting on the horse or no. the oxen or the or the mule. Not unless the Indians attacked and they had to jump on one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, the quality of workmanship. Is wait, un- wait a minute, though. When did they change that and and had the driver's bench, if you will, up on the wagon? Well, I think that was on like the Murphys and the Studebakers and oh, the others. Okay. So, but the quality of the workmanship is unsurpassed. I mean, the Conestogas were great as far as workmanship. Yeah. And popular opinion has that the Conestoga is built with a removable boat-shaped box so it can be caulked and floated across the streams. Really? Don't. Now, here's what our, our salesman is telling us. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. He says, don't try it unless you are prepared to go down with your ship. I don't like this salesman. <laughs> well, he's being honest. <laughs> don't try to float your Conestoga. Tiny bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So it's definitely not seaworthy in an emergency. Really? You know. But, but they crossed a lot of rivers, and how come they didn't lose more wagons? Well, and some of them did actually float a little bit. They could. They could li- what's this little bit stuff? Well, you know, I don't know. No. <laughs> But now the late model Conestogas do have a break of sorts, which is more than can be said for most wagons. When you're going downhill at 30 miles an hour out of yeah. control, do you really think that break's going to do anything? Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're short on cash, uh, which both of us are because we're poor, all right, yeah. you can soup up a farm wagon, and they are generally sturdy enough for a short haul to the plains of the Rockies. Short haul. Yeah. 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 For oh, what, 1,700 months. miles? Yeah. The cost is low. They have good resale value when you get out west. The immigrant wagon is quite uh, common on the trail and is smaller and faster than the Conestoga. Okay, so like how big? You know, and I don't have the dimensions, but I'm, you, you know, probably, probably what we see in the fair and rodeo parades around here. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't throw big. in maybe just a chest of yeah. clothes and that's it. Yeah, but on the road with an ox team, you can expect about 12 to 15 miles a day. And most of the wagons did not have brakes, so they would, uh, you know, sometimes use a, they uh, called it a, uh, uh, a Mormon brake, I think is what they call it. Where they jam the wheels. Yeah, or yeah. they uh, 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 rope a log to the back of the the wagon so it doesn't go too far down. Well, there. yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want that guy jamming the wheels to be cross-eyed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, oh, I know we're getting out of time here, but, you know, some of the uphill climbs were, they had to hook up. How did they do that? They had to hook up, unhook several teams oh, to get you yeah. up there. Okay. Uh, now, cost, you're going to spend 300 to $600 Covers eight dollars. Mule teams four hundred and fifty for a six mule team. Six hundred for food and supplies. Everything you're going to take. We're looking at about thirteen hundred to seventeen hundred dollars. Which would be what today? Oh wow, I don't know. Probably if it was seventeen hundred dollars there, you're looking at what? Seventeen maybe twenty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing our our salesman is telling us. Okay, oh yeah, he's still talking. He's still us. talking. He says, "Beware of fancy paint jobs because they may hide unseasoned wood." So we gotta we gotta watch the paint We're job. We're watching him. Yeah. Now, okay. Here we go. Here's the usual length yeah. for an immigrant wagon. It's nine to ten feet. With the width of the box about four feet, and approximately five feet of headroom uh, in the wagon. Okay. Now, custom options. You might have uh, steel axles, but, Zeb, we don't want steel axles for one reason. What do you mean, this we, Kimasabi? Yeah, we're going together. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. No, no, I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so we don't want steel axles because if it breaks on the way, we don't have any way to repair it. No, you don't have a tree, I mean, for heaven's sake. No. So, recommendations, uh, you know, we may stick with the Studebaker. Uh, They're durable. They're available. Uh, Murphy wagons are, are good. Too, so I'm almost out of time. I know. Uh, Can we do this again next week? Uh, well, we, and, and we'll find out what they put in those things. Yeah, we can. And, and Let, let's talk about the actual wagon and everything else, and what and, they put in there. It, how many wagon trains? Quickly, give me an answer on this. I'm running late. Were actually pulled by horses? Hardly any. That's what I thought. You wanted. You wanted mules. Okay, the only reason you wouldn't want mules is because they were more attractive to the Indians. Yeah. If you had oxen, you were slower, yeah. but less attracted by Indians and more sure. And if you had horses, they're there. gone. Oh, horses. You'd have to carry grain yeah. and feed. Yeah. Horses were, you know. So the TV series wagon train, bah humbug. No. Yeah. Oxen, okay. mostly, and mules. Okay. Great. 
I learned a lot. I learned that I don't want to go shopping for a wagon with you. That's what I learned. No, no. <laughs> we, we wouldn't make it 10 miles out of town. No, luckily. Yeah. Anyway, uh, can we carry this on next week? Sure. All yeah. right, Dr. History. God bless you. Good show. Uh, I enjoyed this. This All is right. fun. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Uh, let me do this, and I'll visit with you for a second. Okay. Uh, don't forget, on Thursdays, we have a segment called Cashew County School Days, and we want to say thank you very much to our sponsors of Cashew County. County School Days, and they are a child's world at 1308 Overland in Burley. And don't forget, they've got all kinds of new spring dresses to choose from and save 20%. All of this and more at a child's world, 1308 Overland in Burley, along with the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue East in Twin, Fa- uh, Twin Falls in Burley. I'm in trouble already. I haven't done that yet. That's the first time I've said that. Ambulatory Surgery Center, 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. And for all your outpatient surgeries like life-saving colonoscopies and glaucoma surgeries, cataract surgeries, save money, contact the Ambulatory Surgery Center in Burley along with the Child's World sponsoring Cassia County School Days. i got to send it back over to the main studios. I'll be back in three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Ah, thank you and welcome back. And again, pardon me for this cough that both Dr. Ken Turner and myself have had on the program. I apologize. Oh, I'd like to find out what's causing that. Anyway, don't forget Ag Express is looking for drivers. And they're looking for full and part-time positions. They're looking for retired folks that want to drive. My goodness, two or three days a week, they're looking for people. They're looking for you. And you're home every night, and you're driving new and maintained equipment. There's vacation schedules, benefit programs, all of this and more. Contact Ag Express today, Dale and Paul, at 438-8886. Allen in Twin Falls at 731-2495. And Russ and Burley at 4317175 Ag Express is looking for drivers Ag Express is looking for you right now also quickly remember that Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox have teamed up and they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on qualifying new Lennox home comfort systems, give them a call today. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459, saving you money with Lennox. Let's go to the phone line right now and uh, welcome a gentleman that I don't think has been on my program before, but I really am interested in the subject matter this morning with the Pacific Legal Foundation. Good morning to staff attorney Oliver Dunford. Oliver, good morning to you. I unfortunately wasn't able to get him on the phone, sir. Well, keep trying. I will definitely do that. I already uh, left a voice message, so I'm hoping that they'll call back. Of all days with my cough and we can't find... Deanne, would you help me out, please, and see if you can't help me along with wheels in getting Oliver on the air right away. Get a hold of Colin, and he'll find out right away. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated, and boy, with this cough, they're really appreciated. So give me a jingle and talk to me at 436 2244 Eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Give me a jingle on the landline. Did you hear about the Colorado high school teacher? This is this is beyond being despicable. This is beyond uh, uh, teaching our kids the wrong message in our school systems. This Colorado high school teacher made a pinata and put Donald Trump, the president of the United States, picture on it and told the students to go out and bash and smash the piñata. Well, one mother, thankfully, one mother showed some class, and she got a hold of the school, and she says, no, that's not going to happen anymore. And she raised all kinds of cane, God bless her, and the teacher was suspended, and rightfully so, because this is not the respect of our nation, 
This is not the respect of the Oval Office and the presidency that this country deserves. And that teacher, I hope he gets fired in the long run. And uh, I just thought I'd throw that story out to you. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Wheels, did we get him? Give me one moment. All right, we've got a caller coming in. I'll take that call real quick if it's for me on the program this morning. And then we'll get our, hopefully, our attorney on the air. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Hey, Zeb, on the, on the western deal, you know that up above Oakley, there, there's a California trail that the Boy Scouts have went up there and marked out. And talking about the wagons not having any brakes on them, if you... If you ride that trail up through their horseback, you can see where they tied the wagons or ropes onto the wagons, and the and the and the burn marks are still in the trees where they let them wagons down off them trees. Really, off that mountain. Wow. You know, there's so much history right here in our area because it is right on the Oregon Trail. I did not know that, and I appreciate that call. I mean, so they actually have the still on the trees, the rope burns from trying to slow the wagons down, right? Yes, yes, yes they do, Zeb. And if you go up there, they marked it with white markers. It's the California Trail. Wow. And they marked it with white markers down down through there you know when you think about those people that uh came across this country and all the devices and the ingenuity that they had you got to sit back and say they were pretty doggone smart weren't they well they 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 were and if you look at some of that terrain they went over they had to be really tough individuals and and think about how they were going to do things cross the rivers get down the mountains and there and there's some pretty steep mountains up there that they've slid them off of. Well, I absolutely agree with you, Deanne. I think it's on there someplace, but uh, I agree with you that I want to get up and see that, as a matter of fact. And there's, so, like I said, so much history here with the Stricker cabins over at uh, south of Hanson and everything. Wow, we've got a lot of history that uh, is right here in our backyard. We, we do, and where you where you ride horses and that, you can get to a lot of that country where some people can't. So just, I just thought I'd let you know that if you take your horses up through there that you probably come across that. Now, I appreciate that information. God bless you for your call this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, that's one thing I like about when I contacted Dr. History about nine, ten years ago, and I said uh, at that time, of course, I didn't call him Dr. History. I called him Dr. Ken Turner. I said, you know, you really are a history buff. Why don't you start a segment on my program, and we'll call it Dr. History. And so one thing led to another, and it's developed into what it is today, and I really appreciate him and uh, that story. Sir, thank you very much. Much. And uh, calls are welcome, 436 2244. Yes. I was just going to let you know that Oliver Dunford is on the phone for you. He's got him. Okay, good. Uh, what we were looking for, we found, and we found the attorney, Oliver Dunford. Good morning, sir. I'm glad we finally managed to catch you. Is he there, Wheels? Heck? Oliver, are you on the phone? Yes, I am. You can hear me now. Okay. We've got to get right to it because we're running late. We were trying to get you on the telephone. Uh, I know the Obama administration uh, has taken away a lot of rights for the state of Alaska in their ability to manage predators. Bring us up to speed on this story and tell us how the Pacific Legal Foundation got involved. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, the Obama administration late. Uh, in its in administration, uh, issued a rule through the Interior Department that restricted hunting and some other activities on uh, national wildlife lands in Alaska. And under the Congressional Review Act, uh, this this year, Congress uh, passed a joint resolution signed by President Trump that withdrew that rule, um, which would open up that land again in Alaska um, to hunting and and would leave it the management to uh, local officials and to local hunters and conservationists. Okay, but let's... And a, uh, 
a group called the Center for Biological Diversity has sued, arguing that the withdrawal of the rule uh, is unconstitutional. And their argument basically boils down to that Congress and the President cannot enact a law that restricts the authority of the executive branch. Uh, in fact, they say that the, the law that was passed here uh, involves a congressional invasion of executive authority in violation of the separation of powers doctrine. Uh, and on behalf of Pacific Legal Foundation, two individual hunters and two conservation and wildlife groups, uh, we've intervened uh, to challenge their argument. Uh, we think that their argument turns the separation of powers doctrine on its head. Uh, and in fact, Congress and the president uh, can certainly oversee uh, the executive agencies. You know, Oliver, all this is, and you know it as an attorney that's uh, seen the ploys of the environmental groups, all this is is a ploy or a scheme to take away more usage of the land and put the people that are living there in jeopardy and harm's way. They can't protect themselves. This is lunacy, and I'm glad that Trump is trying to trump that situation with Obama. All that deal was was just another form of control. Would you agree? Uh, absolutely. And uh, two of our uh, uh, clients, as I said, are individual hunters, and they uh, are master Alaska guides. They lead, uh, they lead hunting uh, groups. And so they, they have uh, an incentive to maintain the wildlife in Alaska. Uh, their livelihoods depend on it. Uh, and so the idea that some bureaucrats in Washington uh, know better than local hunters and conservationists how to protect the land in Alaska is ludicrous. Well, yeah, Oliver, though, there's a couple of things I wanted to ask you about, because safety is a big issue. I know that the word manage predator populations in the state, including wolves and bears. Up there, we're talking some still pretty wild country, and we're talking about where people, they need, if they're going to go outside, they better carry a gun, something that'll bring down a grizzly or whatever. Were they limited on even being able to possess or have guns on their own property to fight off predators? Well, you know, I don't know how far uh, the regulation went. I don't think so. I think they were um, restricted, in this case, just on the on the federal land. I see. Uh, but uh, bears and wolves uh, don't necessarily know where those boundaries end. Amen. Uh, and so if they become uh, too populous inside the federal lands, uh, they're going to go looking for prey outside of it. And, and will certainly go onto state-owned land and private property. So this this creates a problem beyond simply the federal land in Alaska. What would have been the uh, charge or offense if, let's just put it in a first-person scenario, I stepped outside of my cabin, headed for my barn, and there is a couple of grizzly bears that would like to have me for lunch, and I shot both of them. What would have happened? You, you know, I, I honestly, I don't know the answer to that. Well, I... I think it really it opens up the door for what happened here in the state of Idaho with the reintroduction of the wolves, and fortunately the rules and regulations and the law was changed to where a person could protect their property. But up there in Alaska, my goodness, if they can't manage predators, Oliver, that state is in trouble. That's right, uh, and, and it does seem uh, more than reasonable that you should be able to defend uh, your own property, doesn't it? Well, now these environmental groups, I want you to kind of expand on that a little bit. These people, all they do 24-7, 365, is look for loopholes in any law so that they, the environmentalists, can be in control of the land. And any time you, on behalf of the Pacific Legal Foundation, can put them in their place, which I hope is last place, I wish you a lot of luck. Well, thanks very much. We've, uh, you know, through our red tape rollback program, uh, we've identified a number of, of regulations that uh, were passed during the Obama administration, and uh, and to date, 13 of those regulations have been withdrawn uh, through the Congressional Review Act. Uh, and, and one of those areas uh, of overreach is certainly in the environmental area, where, again, uh, there seems to be this notion that, that bureaucrats in Washington no better than people on the ground uh, how to preserve that property. Well, what about the state itself, uh, the state of Alaska? Did they have no power whatsoever in overriding this insidious, stupid ruling by Obama, or were they left with their hands tied? 
Well, interestingly, one of the allegations in the, the environmentalist complaint here is that the, the state, uh, a state board in Alaska uh, was meddling too much with federal authority. Uh, so, ironically, they were arguing that the bureaucrats in Alaska were meddling too much with the bureaucrats in Washington. Uh, and, and again, the idea that local uh, authorities and, and private individuals don't know how to protect their own property uh, is, is really silly. Dangerous. So what could have happened, and you mentioned that there were a lot of outfitters and guides up there that were going across federal lands in Alaska. They really were running a risk for safety, weren't they? Well, that's right. Uh, and, and they're running a risk for safety, and they're also uh, running a risk of, of losing their livelihoods. If the, if the wolves and the bears uh, are not properly managed, uh, the prey uh, will, will be run out, and, and these hunters will have... Um, nothing left to, to make a living and, and the properties will be all the lands in the federal areas and, and surrounding areas could be overrun with, with bears and wolves. And that's exactly what these environmental groups want. They want everything to be going against mankind so they, the environmentalists, can have more control. Doesn't it make you feel good and warm and fuzzy all over to beat these environmentalists? You know what, I've, I've been working here for two months and uh, and I love it. I love uh, protecting the individual liberty and uh, individuals who are just trying to make a living doing what uh, people have done forever. Uh, the, the one interesting thing about environmentalists uh, is that they, they seem to think that humans are not a part of nature, uh, and and clearly we are, and uh, and we should be allowed to uh, to pursue our livelihoods and and to manage uh, the environment as as we see fit. And, and certainly, no. again, no one has an interest in, in destroying it. You know, Oliver, that's a very good point, and I'm glad you brought that up, because we're looking at stories, whether it's in California, Northern California, will the wolves coming in there, or whether it's here in my state, of which I have a lot of knowledge about the idiocy that's uh, happened here on the wolf restorations uh, since ni- uh, 19, uh, let's see, what was it, uh, 95. And uh, I'm glad that we have people like the Pacific Legal Foundation fighting for us, because it's about high time we made common sense prevalent instead of these idiot programs by the environmental groups. Well, thanks for, thanks for all you do in promoting us, and, and, uh, and we appreciate it, and, uh, and we love what we're doing here. You know, if people want to have more information about what you do and all the caseloads that you're studying and working on, uh, how do they find out more info about Pacific Legal Foundation? You can go online and Look up www.pacificlegal.org. Uh, we've got all kinds of information on there, including all the cases we're currently involved in and all of our uh, victories in the past. So uh, please give us a look. Well, I appreciate your coming on the program. And is it a slam dunk now that Trump is going to override those uh, regulations and their, their past history? Is it a slam deal? Uh, I mean, we think... The, the way that the law passed here is uh, clearly constitutional. Even even the environmentalists here admit that the law was passed uh, in both houses of the Congress and signed by the president, which makes it a law. And uh, and so we think there are more uh, regulations that are subject to this Congressional Review Act, and we think uh, we think we're going to keep sending them to them, and, and hopefully Trump will keep signing them. All right. Well, I appreciate you. Staff attorney for the Pacific Legal Foundation, Oliver Dunford. Oliver, take care. God bless. Come back again soon. You too, and thanks so much. All right, sir. Thank you. Can you imagine? The, it just blows my mind, these environmental groups, with all their money, all their millions, maybe even billions, if you will, with the B, uh, enacting and uh, basically putting into effect laws that uh, take away your security, your protection, and our use of our taxed federal lands. And I'm glad that we've got organizations like the Pacific Legal Foundation that are fighting for us, and they're beating them beating them. I love that. Uh, i got to get a weather forecast on here, and I haven't coughed for a whole 20 minutes. My goodness, what's the matter? Uh, the weather brought to you this hour by Scarrow Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657. Oh, delicious meats, breakfast meats. Mm, listen to this. 
They've got the buckboard bacon, leaner and more economical, and it comes in different flavors like lemon pepper and smokehouse barbecue, ranch. Oh, it is good. Breakfast sausages, bratwurst, bratwurst. I love bratwurst. I love bratwurst. And nothing better than a breakfast of bratwurst and eggs and maybe a hot scone. <laughs> Love that. Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. And right now, here's Scotty with the weather. Well, going to be looking pretty nice. And Scotty Cameron sitting in for your Zeb at the Ranch weather forecast as Gina is out. Yes, yeah, sunshine today. Going to be a little bit breezy. Highs around, breezy, should say, around 10 miles an hour. Looking for a high near 71, clear tonight with a low around 45. Then for tomorrow, going to be absolutely beautiful. Looking for sunny skies, a high near 75 Wednesday night. Mostly clear, low around 48. Going to see Haiti on Thursday. Friday, maybe a chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the weekend, as that will hold out as well. That's your Zebra the Ranch weather forecast. I'm Scotty Cam. I appreciate that, Scotty. Thank you very much. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. Changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. I've got time for a couple of calls, and besides that, if you call, you can do most of the talking. I won't have to, so give me a jingle at 436-2244, Give me a call. Love to hear from you. Let's see what else have I got in the news while I'm waiting for you to call. Oh, uh, the Senate hearing yesterday with James Clapper and Sally Yates and... Ay, ay, ay. I mean, come on. They admitted that there was surveillance. They admitted that there was eavesdropping. There was an admittance that some of the names of private individuals became unmasked. But nowhere or any time during that Senate hearing did they, Clapper or Yates, ever say that there was any evidence... Let me repeat that. Never did they say there was any evidence of Russian collusion with the Trump people for the election. You know, Democrats, when are you going to let that dog lay on the porch? It's absolutely getting old hat, way past being old hat, of trying to drum up and reason some kind of a argument that the Russians and Trump and the collusion and everything, they won't let it lie. Here's Clapper and Yates yesterday, and they were admitting to a whole bunch of spying and espionage and surveillance on the American public. But when asked specifically, they still said no evidence of Russian collusion. By the way, don't forget our friends. And man, I'll tell you what, I... I am impressed. It takes a lot to impress me. I've been to a couple of county fairs in the hog calling contest. But I am so impressed to just go over to any of the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and just sit and watch. Just sit and watch. I mean, they're running over here. And they're rolling tires over there. And they're fixing a tire over here. And they're taking tires and putting them on this great big outfit. It's just absolutely amazing. They really serve you. They've got the best in tires for your pickups and your SUVs. And they've got all the tires for your cars and your horse trailers and your boat trailers. And don't forget to ask them about a free pre-trip safety check. Yes, visual inspection of many, many of the very important components of your car, including, you know, the wheel alignment, tire wear, front end components, tires, brake components. I mean, they really care about your safe driving. So stop in and see them today. Them who? I will tell you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, Twist Family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. Doing the right thing matters at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wow. It is a hub of activity, let me tell you. Tomorrow on the program, what have we got cooking? We've got Dave Bego, 
And uh, then we're going to be talking about it. Maybe, maybe a future gas tax that will raise the roof on prices. And then we're going to be talking about how hard it is to find good, qualified, hardworking employees. All of this and more with our various guests that are going to be on the program tomorrow on Wednesday, May 10th. Don't forget, we'll saddle the horse at 8.06 and ride for three hours right here on K-Bar, 12.30 a.m. and streaming live all over the world on zebbell.com and remember our slogan for the show the way things were are the way things ought to be god bless have a good day wheels talk to you tomorrow morning buddy